When people can't see the difference between a toaster pastry and an Uzi, um, there's something wrong with society. I'm Lenore Skenazy. I'm founder of the book, blog, and movement Free Range Kids, which is dedicated to the simple proposition that our children are not in constant danger. What is an overreaction? Overreaction is treating something minor as if it's gigantic, right? And so if I to give you an example of what I think of as an overreaction in K through 12, I would have to talk about all the zero tolerance laws that have littered America and gotten children kicked out of school for the most bizarre things. A five-year-old girl was at kindergarten and I guess she threatened another child, said she was going to go home and get her bubble gun, which is a Hello Kitty gun that shoots bubbles, which is obviously very threatening. Um, a kid brought a spork to school, which was a fork and a spoon, but unfortunately also a knife. The best example of zero tolerance in a, a school is a kid who was eating a Pop-Tart at breakfast at school, bit it into, I guess, the shape of an L. A teacher said, oh my God, a shape of an L, he, that's like a gun. And because it was like a gun, very barely like a gun, it was treated as if it was a gun and the student got suspended. When people can't see the difference between a toaster pastry and an Uzi, um, there's something wrong with society. But I, I warrant that they could tell the difference, and yet they still felt that they were smart to be thinking of children's safety and very concerned about safety to the point where they would pretend like even this presented a threat. And that's where free-range kids and fire overlap. It's the idea that kids are in such danger that we are hallucinating it everywhere, even when we see an L-shaped Pop-Tart. There's something I call worst first thinking, and it's practiced on every campus, every school, and I think in every prosecutor's office uh, around the country. It is coming up with the worst case scenario first and acting as if that just happened or is likely to happen. Recently, there was a case in South Carolina of a mom works at McDonald's. She has a nine-year-old daughter, and the nine-year-old wanted to go and play in the park during the day instead of sitting at McDonald's with her mom. And the mom said, okay, dropped her off at this very lovely, popular, sprinkler-filled park. And another mom saw the kid there day one, day two, day three, she goes up to the girl, are you here with anyone? No, my mom is not here. Where is she? She's at work. She's at work. Lady dials 911. The cops come. They immediately arrest the mother, throw her in jail, and they put the kid into child protective services for 17 days. And what is the rationale? The rationale is that something bad could have happened. Overreaction and censorship, which both come from the same position, which is that um, our kids can't handle anything. We better protect them and put a bubble around them. Are teaching our kids that to roll with some punches and to be tough um, and even to be sensible are, are old fashioned. And nowadays you really get points for thinking, oh, that could have been upsetting or, oh, that could have hurt someone or, um, oh, that Pop-Tart could be a gun. You're really supposed to not make any distinction between something minor and something major because everything hurts all children all the time. Kids on campus are probably thinking twice, three times, 17 times about whether what is about to come out of their mouth will be misconstrued and God forbid end up on YouTube and they'll be um, hated and ostracized and unable to get a job like me after this interview for the rest of their lives.